morning everyone and uh, happy Easter to everyone this uh, celebrating uh, the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, I'd like to bring a little thought um, it's found in John chapter 20 and we're going to read about a woman called Mary and I want to look um, at the resurrection this morning through the eyes of a woman a woman called Mary, Mary Magdalene. And we're going to read uh, John chapter 20 from verse 11 through to verse 16. It says, But Mary stood without at the sepulchre weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre and saith, Two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord. So Mary was crying. She says, because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have led him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus saith unto her, woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? And she, supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou hast borne him hence, tell me where thou hast led him, and I will take him away. Jesus saith unto her, Mary. She turned herself and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Let me read that verse again. Jesus saith unto her, Mary. She turned herself and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. The very purpose of this Easter weekend reminds us that no matter what we are going through today, no matter what we have been through yesterday or what may lay ahead in our tomorrows, and can I say this, these are strange days. I have never, I'm 60, coming 63 years of age in July, and I have never experienced or saw anything like I am witnessing outside of, 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 the, of my home these days as we look upon the internet, upon the television, uh, you know, what's going on out there in the world with this coronavirus? It has brought the world to a standstill. And it's powerful. So let me say that again. In the light of everything that's going on here, I want you to see the resurrection of Jesus Christ through the eyes of Mary Magdalene. So the very purpose of this Easter weekend is to remind us that no matter what we are going through today, no matter what we've been through yesterday, or what may lay ahead in our tomorrows, you ready for this? Christ is our only hope because he conquered death. He makes all things new. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 15 and 17 in the New Living Translation, Translation says these words, and if Christ has not been raised then your faith is useless and you are still guilty of your sins. 
It is imperative that Jesus Christ raised from the dead or else we are still in our sins. That's how much we are depending on the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe somehow Mary Magdalene knew this. She knew that if Jesus hadn't or didn't rise from the dead, that she was finished. She knew that he was her only hope. She knew that in her heart of hearts. I believe somehow Mary knew this. I want to look at the resurrection through the eyes of this woman this, this morning. First of all, I want to look at Mary's torment. I want to look at her courage. And I want to look at her joy. In John chapter 19 and verse 25, it will give you a little insight into this woman. It says, Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Cleopas, and Mary Magdalene. Three Marys standing together. I believe they would have been clutching holding on to each other's arms and trying to comfort each other with the tears as they run down their eyes with sadness and pain as they watched Jesus upon the cross. Mary watched as they led the Saviour to Calvary and beheld as they crucified him and nailed him to that cross. She heard the words of Christ as he hung upon that cross. This was her torment. She would have heard him as he cried, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And Mary knew what he meant by that because she had already experienced the forgiveness from Christ himself when he set her free. She would have heard him say to the thief on the cross that hung beside him, today you will be with me in paradise. Mary knew that he was going back to heaven Number three, she would have heard him cry, Behold your son, behold your mother, as he looked down at John and, and Mary, his mother, and Mary Magdalene was standing right beside her, and she would have seen this. And she would have looked at, at the Lord Jesus as he said these words, Behold thy mother, behold thy son, look after my mother. In his agony, still looking out for his family. She heard this. She knew the love that was driving this forward. And the pain that she must have been feeling. And the love that she must have been feeling. More than anybody around that cross, I believe. Because to whom much is forgiven, the shame will love much. And Mary Magdalene knew what she had been forgiven from. Then she would have heard him cry, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Things that she didn't fully understand then, but one day would understand. One day she would understand that he had to be forsaken so that a day was coming when she would never be forsaken. 
Jesus says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And she was to realize what that truly meant. To hear those words out of his mouth, I thirst. Him who gave living water was now hanging upon the cross and saying, I thirst. And then, lifting his voice and crying, It is finished. Had a last time, paid in full. Mary heard these from his beautiful lips, these words from his beautiful lips. And Father, into thy hand I command my spirit. And she would have watched as he gave up the ghost and died. The last time she saw him, and you have to understand this, the last time she saw him, he was being carried away to be buried by Joseph of Arimathea. And Nicodemus, who came to him by night. And isn't it strange? And, and, and can I say this? The cross of Jesus Christ can give you courage. Because Joseph of Arimathea, it says that he was a, a disciple, but a secret disciple, but because of fear of the Jews. There are people who believe in him, but because of fear, they will not openly witness now, Joseph of Arimathea doesn't care who sees him. He's taken him down from off the cross. The cross will give you courage. And Nicodemus, who came to him by night, when no one was watching, that be you, friend. Is that a picture of you? You come to him when nobody's watching. You don't tell anybody. Oh, would you see the cross this morning? May it give you courage to confess him as Lord and as your Savior. Mary would have been in torment. In Luke chapter 8 and verse 27 it says, Mary called Magdalene out of whom went seven devils. I think that's incredible. One for every day of the week. There are people maybe listening to me. And you're tormented. There was a man in Mark chapter 5 who was tormented. Living among the tombs. With, with a legion of demons within him. Torturing him day and night. He was cutting himself, sound familiar. Crying day and night. No man could tame him, no man could help him. Until one day he saw Jesus and he ran to him. Are you being tormented? Why don't you run to the Lord? Why don't you run to the cross? And may you throw yourself down at his feet. And ask for help. Mary called Magdalene out of whom went seven devils. Oh, what a way to live. Your mind just runs to the kind of life that this woman was living. Until she met Jesus. And he cast them all out of her. Her torment would have been this. You ready for this? What will happen to me? If them things come back to me. I know how I used to live. Friends, can I say this? I remember how I was before Jesus Christ saved me. And the thought that I would go back to that life horrifies me. Mary would have been tormented. What will happen to me? If he's not resurrected, if he's not alive, and these things come back to me, what, what will I do? Back to misery. Back to madness. Back to filth. Back to 
hopelessness, back to having no hope, no future. If Jesus Christ is dead and not alive, Mary's torment. Secondly, I want to look at Mary's courage. Oh, and where did she get this courage from? In 1 John 4, 18, it says, There is no fear in love. Perfect love drives out all fear. Mary's love for the Saviour overcame her fear. I want to say something about this. Mary's love for her Saviour overcame the fear. Because in John chapter 20 and verse 1 it says, Early, when it was yet dark, Mary went through the dark streets of Jerusalem at a time when Christians were being crucified. In other words, she didn't care for her own safety. The love for her Savior overcame the fear of everything else that was going on around her. Let me say this. Courage doesn't mean that you don't get afraid. Murray, uh, courage means that you don't let the fear stop you. Right now as I'm bringing this word, our hospitals are filled with people with coronavirus. And surrounding them people are people who are afraid, doctors and nurses and cleaners. The people that are helping the hospital to run, the porters, every one of them. And somewhere they have found this courage that no matter what's happening out there, they have to be there and they've got to help. I think it's wonderful. May God richly bless them. Because it could be your mother next week they're looking after, your father, your son, your daughter. And this courage, I take my hat off to them. I have members of my own church who are on the front line. They're up there in the hospitals and the nursing homes. And they're reaching out and they're doing what they, what they can. What, what's driving them to do it? You ready for this? It's love. The love for their, 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 their fellow mankind. Those, those young children in the children's wards. People having nowhere else to look to. And they're going up there and they're risking their lives. Standing in wards full of this coronavirus, this virus that is literally killing people all over the world. And they know it's there. And yet they have the courage to go and to, and, 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 and to try to reach out and help. Many of them are Christians who are praying every day for the courage that took Mary that morning, that resurrection morning, to the tomb of Jesus Christ. Mary's courage came for her love of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now can I ask a question? How far are we prepared to go in order to find Jesus? There's a, there's a fear that's gripping the world. Many people are feeling it and, and maybe somehow this little message will find you. I hope it does. You don't know what way to turn. Jesus is the answer. Jesus Christ is the answer. The Bible says you shall seek him and you shall find him when you search for him with all of your heart. 
I've got the clothes. I want this clothes with Mary's joy. In John chapter 20, verse 11 to 16, uh, our reading this morning, it says in verse 11, But Mary stood without at the sepulchre, weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre. I want you to see this. Mary weeping and stooping down. She saw angels. She saw the supernatural. There, there is a realm out there that you can't see. But God can take the scales of your eyes. And let you see things more than you ever knew that was out there. God can take the scales of your eyes. If you would but weep before him and stoop down seeking him. Mary, as she looked into that tomb, she saw two angels. One at the top and one at the bottom of where Jesus had lay after they crucified him. In verse 13, she says that they had taken her Lord, watch this, and they say unto her, Woman, why weep us lie? She's standing weeping. Why weep us thou? She saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord. You ready for this? Even a dead Jesus was still her Lord. What does he mean to you? He meant everything to this woman called Mary. Verse 15 says, and supposing him to be the gardener, watch this. Jesus saith unto her, her woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? And she supposing him to be the gardener. How often do we thought? How often have we been in the presence of Almighty God? Thought he was something else. How often have we been in the presence? Of almighty God. And we thought he was somebody else. Hebrews 13 and 2 says. Not to be. Uh, be not forgetful to entertain strangers. For thereby some have entertained angels unawares. I wonder if you ever had a chat with an angel and you didn't even know it. I wonder if God has sent someone to you. An angel in disguise. I can tell you, those nurses and doctors up there this morning, I'm sure they look like angels to many of those poor people who are struggling to beat their souls fast. This rotten, stinking fire. May their hands become the hands of Almighty God. May their words of courage and inspiration to their patients, may they hear them. have to close in verse 16 Jesus says Mary has God ever called your name Jesus said my sheep hear 
my voice. Friend, let me say this. Have you ever heard God call your name? And if truth be told, you run away from it. I did the same for many, many years. I could take you to incidences in my life. When God called me, when I heard my name, David, I am the way. The truth and the life. David, come on to me. David, don't do that. David, don't go there. God reaching out. For years I run from that voice. Until one day, 32 years ago, lying in a little cell in Lurgan, this poor man cried and the Lord heard him and delivered him out of all of his troubles. My sheep hear my voice. Mary, what a privilege to hear the voice of the risen Lord. Mary's song that morning would have been, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. He's alive, them demons ain't coming back to me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can you imagine her joy? Joy unspeakable and full of glory. And the half has never yet been told. Let me close with that scripture. 1 Corinthians 15, 17 to 20 says these words. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is in fame. And you are yet in your sins. It's in pearl of that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. Otherwise, we are still in our sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. Those are mums and our dads who have passed before us, our grandmothers, our grandfathers, those who have died in Christ have perished if Jesus Christ is not raised from the dead. If, he says, in this life, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But now, hallelujah, is Christ risen from the dead? Hallelujah. It's hard to preach this sitting down. Hallelujah. But now is Christ risen from the dead? And become the first fruits of them that sleep. Jesus Christ is alive. Because he lives. We can face tomorrow. Because he lives. There is hope. He is called the God. I say this because he lives I believe we're going to have it tomorrow all that we are going through will pass away Jesus himself says heaven and earth will pass away but my words shall never pass away May the Lord bless you on this resurrection morning. I'm going to do something and maybe some of you will want to, to join me. In our wee church we do this on a Friday night. Sometimes we do it uh, on a Sunday morning and uh, we're going we're gonna to break bread. If you want to break bread with me, 
feel free to do that. I just want to read the scripture from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. From verse 23. It says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. Hallelujah. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Let's do in remembrance of me. Let's do that right now. Then verse 25 says, After the same manner also he took the cup. And when he had stopped saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do ye as oft as ye drink it, again he says, in remembrance of me. And that's what we are doing. We are remembering him this morning as we take this bread and, and drink this wine in remembrance of him. A little drop of cordial. The Lord bless you. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. We love the Lord with all of our heart. We're so glad that he took our sins and our sorrows and he made them as Pharaoh. We are so privileged that he bore our grief on our sorrow that he was wounded for our transgressions that he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed father thank you for this little remembrance we have done this thousands of times father And I believe the reason that you say to us twice, this do in remembrance of me, because, Lord, we are so quick to forget. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. This old sin-cursed nature that hasn't went away. The flesh that wrestles with the spirit and the spirit with the flesh. Lord, it's, it's still here. And Lord, how it takes us away. How this old sin-cursed nature would take us away from the God that we love if we let it. But it's why it's so important, Father, we keep short accounts with you. And so that's what we're doing right now. We're remembering you. We're remembering your goodness to us. We remember, we, we remember your doing and your dying on our behalf. And we tell you we we'll love you. I pray, Father, for all those doctors and nurses, all the staff, all the workers on the front line. Would you protect them? Oh, God, please protect them this morning. Cover them in your precious blood. Oh, may the angel of the Lord stand guard over those beds. And even from this remembrance of thee, even from this little message, Father, may many turn to thee. May the gardener, Father, be standing. Oh, may the angels of the Lord be standing. May you do a work, Father, of grace and of mercy. May you reach many through these things that are happening at this time all over the world. I feel, Father, you've got our attention. Oh, God, I pray that your word will go forth and that many will turn to you and many will receive your offer of salvation. Thank you for hearing us. What I ask, I'm asking you in Jesus' precious name.
Amen. And everybody said, Amen. God bless you all. So stay safe. Look after one another. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.